We interrupt this regularly scheduled mental breakdown for this important message. Hey there, viewer. My name's Kelsey, and I have a few questions for you. Are you feeling well? Do you have a job? Are you financially stable? Have you cried significantly less this week, considering your heart still feels like a black hole that's just waiting to suck the life out of anything that still brings you joy in this world? Did you just receive a huge fucking check from the government of $1,400 that you're gonna feel guilty about because you know instead of pulling yourself out of student loan debt, you're gonna use that money on alcohol on those overly priced eucalyptus sheets you have a 10% off coupon for? If you answered yes to all of these questions, then I'm encouraging you to donate. Not only because 10% off is like not even that much on a $200 pair of sheets, even though they would probably revolutionize the way you sleep for the rest of your life and most likely prevent split ends, which in turn would save you a lot of money on hair care expenses, but also because it's an easy and selfless thing to do. If you haven't noticed, I'm not very good at these serious conversations. There, there but I'm going to set all of my awkward tendencies aside for five minutes and talk about something that I feel really passionate about and something that I myself don't do as much, and that is giving back. I just had the best idea for a philanthropy. Now why exactly should you spend all of your time and energy on something that's not the Kardashians? First, helping others in need can put a new perspective on your own life and really make you appreciate what it is that you do have in your life, either your job, your things, your home, your family. And I feel like this is something that we all kind of need in times like this when we're all really going through a lot and our worlds have kind of been flipped upside down. Second, it'll make you feel something deep in your heart, even those whose heart is a cold, bottomless pit. <laughs> And third, tax deductions. I know nothing about taxes, but you bet your ass I'm writing off every cent I've ever given to charity because a girl's gotta earn back that 29% that was stolen from her. Ugh. So if you're like me and you're in a stable financial position, or if COVID hasn't affected you in any real significant ways this year, but you are still eligible to receive that stimulus check, then I encourage you to take even just a small portion of that and donate it to others that are really suffering during COVID. Listen, I'm not here to tell anybody what to do with their money or their time. I mean, this year has been a fucking roller coaster for all of us and every single one of us has suffered in some way. Yes, this year has been terrible. And ultimately you are in control of where you spend your time and money. But if in fact you do feel comfortable enough to donate either your time or your money, then I hope this video will give you a couple tips on how to do that in an informed and confident way. So with that, here are my top tips to giving back during COVID. The first step to giving back is finding a cause that you really care about. And this can be any cause. It could be a cause related to COVID, such as helping people that have lost their jobs, helping people that are homeless during this time, helping people that need food, helping schools or children that are in terrible situations or that are having a hard time with uh, telelearning. Or it could be something completely separate. It could be climate change, uh, animal rights, world hunger. It could be really anything. But the main thing is to figure out your why and your who. It's as easy as doing a quick Google search, or you can go on some websites that have a full list of nonprofit organizations that have been vetted, such as GuideStar. Here you can search a cause that you're interested in donating to, and up pops a full list of nonprofit organizations. If you don't want to donate to a large organization, other people that you can donate to are GoFundMes. I'm sure you've seen like 50 million GoFundMes on your Facebook feed. You know, you can donate to help your aunt get a new kidney. That would be super nice of you. You can look up small organizations in your direct community. So yeah, just start surf searching the internet, find a cause that you like. The most important thing that you can do, especially during a time of crisis, which we are currently in, is give with intention. Because no one wants to think that they're donating to teen pregnancy when really they're just filling the pockets of Stan who lives in a trailer in South Dakota, but he knows how to make a damn good charity website. Although it might not seem like a ton of people donate a portion of their paycheck to charity, actually statistics show that that's not necessarily true. A ton more people are interested in donating and actually have a strong desire to give back. But the thing that holds a lot of people back is the fear of getting scared or bamboozled, whatever that means. Or the thought that our money isn't actually going to fight a cause. It's just filling the pockets of some nonprofit CEO. And this is 100% a valid concern because it does happen every day. I'm sure you've heard of at least one scandal where a charity that you've previously donated to was in the newspapers for helicoptering out their organization president. All while the kids are starving in Honduras. But there's actually a huge misconception on the way that nonprofits use their money. Now I'm not really gonna get too much into it because I don't have a ton of information on it, but I did watch a really, 
really informative TED talk by Dan Pelota, and he dove a lot deeper into the business of nonprofits and the way that we need to reset our mindset around nonprofits in this capitalist society that we all live in. So if you are interested in watching that, I'm definitely gonna link that down in the description box, go check it out. But this still doesn't mean that we don't need to make informed decisions about where our money's going because we worked hard for this and so did Biden. So before you give, research the organization first. Even if it is a small and you think insignificant amount of money, it is still your money and you should treat it like a gift and be confident in where it is going. Check organization reviews, ratings, critiques, previous spending histories, any scandals that they've been involved in, or some of the great work that they do. As much information as you can find about this organization. What specifically is your money doing? Two websites I'm gonna talk about that will help you navigate that is GuideStar and Charity Navigator. These two sites have information about nonprofit organizations that have already been vetted. They have ratings, critiques, reviews, all that jazz. Go through there and they have just a wide range of information and you can dive deeper into a sort of organization that you're thinking about donating to. I really like Charity Navigator, especially because they have a lot more information than just those specific nonprofits. They also have a ton more articles on how you can make informed donating decisions, how to donate specific items, and a, just a lot more information on the whole subject if you wanna check that out. My third tip, and in my opinion, the most meaningful way that you can make an impact is to donate local. When you donate local as opposed to these large organizations, your money and your time goes a lot further and there's opportunity to make a greater impact in your community. My fourth tip, if you don't have money to give or you don't want to give away your money, which is totally acceptable, um, I mean, you can be using the stimulus check, like I said, to pay off your mounds of student debt or other things, is to donate items that aren't money, such as food, clothes, equipment, tech and COVID specific supplies such as gloves, masks. Again, if you wanna pair this with donating local, go online and search your local food bank. You can actually do this by going to Feeding America's website. They have a search bar where you can actually find your local food banks. And if you do have some money to spare, but you don't wanna donate your money to the organization, uh, something that I think I'm gonna do this time is take some of my stimulus check money, go to the supermarket and buy canned goods with that, buy disinfecting wipes, buy masks and gloves, and donate those supplies to these food banks. You know that you are directly having a positive impact. Um, although you are still spending money, you're not just giving someone money and are unsure of what that's actually gonna go for. And this way, I know that I'm making a direct impact in my community. Also check the websites of some of your local hospitals. I know a lot of hospitals have lists of supplies that they're in need of. I know now that COVID has kind of taken um, a turn and we are on the downhill, I would say, there are a lot of hospitals that are still in need and still need a ton of supplies. There's also organizations that are donating meals to nurses that are working directly in these high risk sectors. And these nurses are working more than 12 hour shifts, sometimes 24 hour shifts. And a lot of people are donating healthy meals to them. Both of these actions are a great way to make a direct impact on our frontline workers and our healthcare system if you want to give directly back to COVID relief. Another great thing to give back, which might be a little bit more difficult, but if you have any electronics laying around, such as laptops, tablets, cell phones that are in good condition and are not from the Stone Age, then you can donate them to local schools or there's websites that you can go on where you can donate your old electronics and they will then donate them to schools. This is a great way to get back because so many students are still learning from home and a lot of students in need don't have the necessary equipment. They're not learning adequately. They can't go to school and some less fortunate schools don't have the means to supply all of their students with computers and tablets. That to be said, the kids don't want your old Razor cell phone. That people are like horrified that I have a Blackberry. You can find out how to do this by maybe calling your local school district and asking if they have a need, or you can go online to computerswithcauses.org, and that is a website where you can mail in your used devices and then they send them out to schools in need. Another way that you can help directly for COVID relief is to make masks. Everyone, their grandma and their aunt's making masks and they're killing the game. Although people like nurses and frontline workers do need N95s or the actual surgical masks, you can give them to neighbors, you can give them to friends and I think just encouraging people to wear more masks in general is doing a lot for the cause. It's also just a great way to brighten someone's day if you make them a homemade mask. Can't hurt. Donate your blood. The Red Cross is 
having a huge shortage on blood donators because their, their blood drives aren't really open now and people don't wanna leave their homes. So blood is in such high demand. If I could give blood, I totally would. I've tried like several times in my life and it just, it just is so terrible. Actually, the last time I went to go get blood drawn for a doctor's appointment, I fainted. So <laughs> if you can donate blood, I would highly recommend you do that. You could go to Red Cross's website and find out where your closest blood drive is. And my fifth and last tip is to donate your time rather than your money. Again, if you don't have the financial means to make that kind of impact, everyone has time that they can give. Time is free and time makes even sometimes a bigger impact than money does. You can help at a local food bank. Like I mentioned, search for your local food bank, call them and ask them what their needs are. I'm sure they're always looking for extra hands and it wouldn't hurt to even give a couple hours of your day on the weekend. You can volunteer at a local animal shelter. This is actually something that I did a little bit in high school because I mean, Obviously I'm a vegan, but I wasn't a vegan back in high school, but I did love animals and I did want to give back. I didn't have any money to give. So what I could do is go to the local animal shelter, walk the dogs, feed the pets, well, they're not pets yet. Basically just take some of the burden from the people that work there 24 seven. Just getting those dogs out of the cages and taking them for a walk around the block, just brighten their day. So if you are an animal lover, animal shelters are always looking for people to come help out and you basically just get to walk dogs all the time. <laughs> Think about if you have any high risk neighbors, you could help them get groceries, the pharmaceutical items, basically anything to make them feel more comfortable if they are high risk and they don't feel comfortable leaving the house. Of course there's millions of other ways that you can donate your time instead of your money, but to search for more, I would recommend going to volunteermatch.org. This is a great website where you could basically search all of the volunteer opportunities that are both online and in your area. And with that, what are the cons of giving? Well, you certainly get a lot more useless mail. Seriously, you give to save the children one time and they literally send me letters like, every single week, but that's actually the only thing I can think of. <laughs> you get a lot more mail. So with that, I encourage you all to give back to a cause that you care about this month. Let's leave this world a little bit better than we found it. And finally, of course, thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and have a amazing week. Stay sane. I know we're all going through a lot of shit right now. The one thing that we all have to be happy about is winter coming to an end. So with that, uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I just want to take five minutes to say I have a new background set up. I finally cleaned my room after moving in two months ago. Yeah, not a floating head anymore. Is it a real YouTube video if I don't make it all about me at some point?